Greetings, young page, and welcome to your first quest. We are thrilled to have someone of your prowess joining the Elder Ranks. The Light knows we need all the help we can get to repel the creatures of darkness. Dungeon Pages is a tactical roll and write game where you play as a character embarking upon an epic quest through various dungeons. Hey, me, Boopy Bob, how's it going? On today's video, we are going to be talking about a print and play game that is a lot of fun, uh, in my personal opinion. So it's called Dungeon Pages. This is a solo game, uh, it is for ages 10 and up, and takes about 20 minutes to play. So let's go ahead to the table and talk more about the game. Let's do it! All right, everybody, so this is Dungeon Pages. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you everything you need to you have to start playing this amazing little solo print and play. So first, you're obviously going to need to print one of the dungeon pages. This uh, dungeon page comes with a character, uh, four dungeons that you need to clear before you can get to the boss dungeon right here. And then once you clear that boss dungeon, you win the game. You will also need a pen or pencil. I like this one. It's got four different colors and also the ink is erasable. Uh, you will need three evil dice and three good dice, uh, whatever color works for you. This was just plain black and white, so I can tell which, like, the evil dice and then the, the good dice for me. As long as you have uh, six dice, three good, three bad that you can tell while you roll, you're good to go. And I have this sweet dice tray. This is a little 3D printed castle that I got one year for Christmas. You can go ahead and just roll them on a table. Nothing uh, that fancy as I've got going on here. But yeah, so once you have all that stuff, uh, you are good to go to start playing Dungeon Pages. So uh, let's go ahead and do a quick overview view of the, how a turn works. So first you're going to be taking all your dice or the dice that are allowed to within the dungeon. They will tell you at the top of the dungeon for like the blacksmith dungeon you or the avenger. Um, you will go ahead and use one evil dice and one good die. You always start off with one good die at the beginning of the game. Uh, you will get more as your character gets, gains more experience. So in this one, I will take one black die and one good die. I will roll them in my little dice tray right here, and then the results will come out. Uh, then you move into the monster phase. The monster phase will go ahead and show you uh, what monster will be attacking you. So you just look on the page and see what uh, monsters you're encountering countering in that specific dungeon and if you meet or exceed their value uh, that's rolled on the evil dice then you will go ahead and take damage um, and then after all the damage for all the monsters has been allocated you will then move into the explorer phase you will be using the good and evil dice to go ahead and start moving across the specific dungeon that you're in. So uh, the way to beat a dungeon is to get from, you start at the door, and once you get a, a set of numbers from the door to the treasure chest, the game immediately ends. Even if you have dice that you have left over that aren't used yet, the game immediately ends. So you want to be careful because in this game, you want to try to make the connection from the door and the treasure chest sequential, whether that's, uh, that means if the number is one above or one below its previous number. So I'll show you over here at this one that I'm working on currently uh, from completing this dungeon. I have a three and then a four, then a three, then a two, and then another three, and then a four and a five, and another five, and then that connects to this. So that is a sequential path that gets me a lot of experience points, and it also will allow me to get some weapons and relics after I'm done with that specific dungeon. Now, if you don't make it a sequential path where you just do, you know, like a one, a six, and it's just not within one above or one below its previous number, then you don't get 
uh, the bonuses, bonus experience points at the end of any specific uh, dungeon that you just complete, which is pretty punishing, I think, in uh, my opinion. If you can't do that, then it's you're going to lose a lot of experience and even the chances of getting some new weapons or relics. So after the exploring phase and you've allocated all the dice to be uh, a, a space on your um, board and you'll start at that like I said you'll be starting at the door and then your weapons will go like this one's an orthogonal one so you have a range of one and it's orthogonal so you can up down left or right and you will be placing a number in one of those spaces and then once you have numbers on the us uh, on the board or on the in the specific dungeon then you can start from the door like say if i put a number here then my next number can go here here because there's a number already there or there and there so it needs to connect to the door or a previously played number or written number i should say and uh yeah so once you go ahead and allocate all those dice out uh because in the exploring phase, you'll be using the good and the bad. Uh, so it's pretty beneficial once you start getting to higher die counts. Uh, and then you'll go ahead and start everything over again. You'll go ahead and pick up all the dice that you're using in this specific dungeon. You'll roll them out. You'll go ahead and do any wandering monsters. Wandering monsters is once you get to some dungeons that have uh, two evil dice. And if they get doubles, uh, you will take a point of damage. And then you go ahead and make sure the monsters within that specific dungeon, if you meet or exceed their attack value, then they'll damage you as well. So after doing the monster phase and the wandering, if there's an, also any wandering monsters, then you go back to the explorer phase. You'll go ahead and put the numbers in any specific way in the dungeon uh, to go ahead and defeat monsters, collect um, items, and eventually get out of the dungeon or complete the dungeon so you can reap the experience that you will get and hopefully making a sequential path. So then after you finish one dungeon and you get all the bonuses that you get from it, all the loot from that dungeon, you can move on to any of the other dungeons. There's no specific... Like, you don't have to, if you do this one, you don't have to do this one. You can go ahead and do that one. Uh, it's in any order, but you have to save the boss uh, dungeon for last. Because um, once you go ahead and do all these, then once all these are done, then you can go ahead to the boss dungeon. And once you finish that, if you make it out alive, uh, then you will win the game. This is pretty cool. I am on my third sheet right now, and uh, I've died horribly the first two, but uh, as of right now, this is uh, this is going well. I have one more dungeon left, and then I can go ahead into the boss a dungeon. I I think on my first sheet made it to the boss dungeon and died horribly, but it was a lot of fun. Um, I'm loving this like small one player. Uh, uh, sudoku like game and i'll get into more of it with uh the pros and cons and final thoughts in a second here but that's basically the overview of dungeon pages it's pretty simple once you get through the rules uh to understand everything there's some icons that you'll need to understand but you're only going to be dealing with so many icons in each one of the dungeons and then also there's the reference of each monster and uh traps that you'll be dealing with within the specific dungeon and another thing that i want to mention is you can't really see it but there's a line a little tear line here so once you play, like say each sheet has one uh, of the characters connected, you can go ahead and actually print more off and tear this sheet and then go ahead and say, if I wanted to do these dungeons with this character, I would tear that off. I would tear that off and then put this character over here. And then even if I wanted to like, like swap them, put that character over here. I thought that was a really cool uh, thing within this uh, this game, this print and play. It's pretty awesome. And I'll talk more again about that with um, my pros and cons. I think I'm being a little ahead of myself, but let's go ahead and talk about, like I said, pros and cons and final thoughts. So let's get to it. All right, buddy. So let's go ahead and get into the pros and cons and final thoughts for Dungeon Pages. This is a game that is pretty cheap. So it's only about six bucks for the core set, and uh, it gets you about, I think, six character sheets, and it gives you a lot of uh, replayability, because I was telling you before, you could tear off the tops of the pages, and then 
go ahead and move them to other dungeons and use that character there so you can go ahead and get uh, more replayability out of it. Now this one I would say is a lot of replayability due to content because I think it's pretty easy for them to create new characters, new dungeons, and so uh, the replayability in that sense will be uh, a lot and uh, very um, a lot and more than uh, someone can handle in you know I guess a short amount of time and uh, it doesn't feel like it ever gets dull because if you're using a new character at a new different type of dungeon then you got new challenges uh, is this character fit for this type of dungeon or is it always kind of in a a troubled spot but i think the play play replayability for uh the contents of this game is there and uh another one of the pros that i have is um again i already talked about the character swapping for each sheets which is awesome and uh i love it as a great little roll and write for like a sudoku if you like sudoku or um even uh have aspired to play Sudoku, but it's always kind of difficult with uh, keeping the numbers uh, different in each row and column. Well, this one's a little more forgiving because there's a lot more mitigation. I did talk about the sequential path uh, that I'm going to be talking about in my cons in a little bit here because uh, I feel like it's let's say let's take it ahead. But the sequential path is something that you'll have to keep your eye on. Also, uh, gaining equipment and items. Uh, within the dungeon. Now that's a little tricky because you have to have two of the same number, a pair, orthogonally adjacent. That's up, down, left, or right to a um, item. Once you uh, do that uh, correctly, where you have, like, say, a three on the left and a three on the right, uh, then you can go ahead and circle that item that you uh, went ahead and were able to capture. And even attacking monsters, you have to, you can, nothing diagonal, it's always uh, to attack a creature. You always have to get above their defense, meet or exceed, and it has to be orthogonally adjacent to them, um, which is pretty, um, it can be a little tricky, and you have to really plan your. Uh, you know, the dice that you rolled and uh, your mitigation to that, to where you hopefully will be able to defeat that monster and gain those uh, items because you really want to gain as much items as you can within this game. Uh, if you don't have much mitigation, uh, because you can only use, uh, like the, the characters will have mitigation for the dice, but you can only use that once per turn and if you have you know a lot of dice and you do it once already and you're like well crap i've already spent my ability this turn uh you're going to need to try to figure out something and items can go a hell, uh, go a long way to help you mitigate uh like teleporting healing or uh, using coins to add or subtract to the value of the dice uh so it's it's pretty tricky trying to balance gaining items and using the character's abilities so you can go ahead and defeat monsters and get items to need that to uh, go ahead and be able to complete a dungeon without crawling out of there on your hands and knees being like i'm always died at that dungeon now i'm supposed to complete three more uh, it's it's a lot of uh making sure a balancing act uh, another one of the cons that i really enjoyed is uh the challenge of each dungeon um I love that you can go ahead and just the character that's already attached to that sheet uh, is kind of challenging and just to determine which dungeon you want to start off at. Uh, you can start one of the heavier dungeons. You can read what the monsters do, the traps, how you want to kind of interact with it. Uh, I think that's a nice little headway. It's, I, I think it's great thematically because it's like you're looking at a, a poster board in the Adventurer's Guild and you're trying to be like, eh, okay, I can do that, I can't do that. Uh, maybe I should do some of these lower, these easier ones first before I go ahead and attack uh, these like more intense dungeons. Uh, so then I can go ahead and uh, be all powerful for when I hit the boss dungeon and have all my abilities, my relics, and my, you know, crazy weapons to go ahead and mitigate all the dice and add subtract uh there's even one die or one ability or one weapon that you could like it was called uh 
I, I forget what the name is, but you could like place one number down and then place the exact same number uh, orthogonally to that number, which was really cool. And it was a really sweet ability. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of challenge within Dungeon Pages. So now that I've talked about the pros, let's go ahead and get into the cons of the game. Uh, one of the first cons that I want to go ahead and talk about is the rule book could have been clearer. There was some confusion as I was learning it and going and just making sure I'm doing everything right. It, it could have been a little clearer. So as long as you get through the rule book and completely understand, play a couple games, maybe you'll have to reprint some pages because you, you missed something. Because I like to, you know, know that I won my game or lost my game without, like, understanding everything. If I, you know, missed something or did something wrong, I feel like, well, I didn't feel like I really won the game. Or, oh, if I knew that, maybe I wouldn't have lost that game. I wish the rule book was just a bit clearer. Uh, another con that I had is uh, the sequential paths. If you don't do a sequential path from the door to the chest, that can be very punishing. There is a lot a lot to that sequential path. And um, also if you fill up each column, um, each column that's full will get you more experience points because you're exploring more of the dungeon uh, once you uh, exit the dungeon, once you get to the treasure chest. But you only get those experience points if you make it a sequential path. And if you don't, you just, you don't. You could just, you know, this. It just seems like it, I, I could see that if maybe you have uh, enough health and you don't need this dungeon to go ahead and face the boss and you boss dungeon and you want to go ahead and just run through it. That's one thing. But early on, if you don't have the right numbers or the right rolls and the right mitigation to make the the dies work for you and put out the numbers to make uh, at least two or three sequential paths uh, in the first like uh, like I said two or three dungeons that will hurt and there won't be a lot of experience and so i just i just feel like the if you don't that's that's one of the just it can really turn a game sour in my opinion if you don't if you don't do a lot of the sequential paths or if you can't if you roll dice and you're like well i can't i don't have any rerolls i don't have any coins to spend to make it a higher or lower value so if you don't get sequential paths uh, to finish your dungeons, that can be very hurting, hurt, hurtful within this game. Uh, another one of the cons that I have is uh, you must make sure your printer is good. I don't know if you saw as I was showing you my pages, but the printer I used to print these off uh, was black and white, which I think was a little bit of a mistake. I should have made them in color and I should have made the, the things darker. There were some things that were too light and that's more of a me problem than uh, the... the um, the problem of the game because I feel like this is a print and play you need to make sure you have um, a good printer or a place to print off these pages in good detail because if you don't then like some of the fog uh, traps that I saw were a little like faded and I was just like and that's I think that's a hit to any print and play if you don't have a good quality printer then that's going to be kind of uh, a hit to your experience with the game so just make sure you have a good printer and Preferably, especially in this one, do it in color because then you'll get all still even more excited with uh, the quality of your experience. Uh, the next con that I have really for this game is, let's see, I don't think, I think that's it. That's pretty much, yeah, that's, it's not bad. Um, I really like dungeon pages. Uh, I'm not too much of a, a print and play person, like uh, if it's your printing and it's like cards you're printing off and things like more than just like a uh, um, a roll a rolling game where you're just using dice and you're marking off things here and there. Uh, I I don't know print plays never really seemed to interest me. But when I saw this, I was interested and uh, I'm glad I I took the chance on it because it's a great game. It's a great solo game. So for all my solo gamers out there. This is a game that I would go ahead and encourage you to go and play. Um, the theme is there. Uh, the challenge is there. So it's not like you're just playing a game. You're just flying through and it's not, you know, it's not giving you a challenge. Um, I will say if you're, I don't know, 
I wouldn't. I don't know how heavy this game would be, but I think you have to definitely pay attention. There's that randomness because your die dice are in place, so the randomness of this game is uh, could. Like I said, uh, if you don't get the right die roll for a sequential path, it sucks. It really like takes a lot of the experience out uh, that you can gain from the game. So yeah, that's my pros and cons and uh, of this game. And final thoughts are just if you like. Print and plays. If you like uh, Sudoku, if you like rolling out, uh, you know, roll and write type games, uh, this is a game that I would recommend. Uh, it looks like they might be getting ready to do more. I'm not sure, but there is quite a, bu- a good bit of content there with its um, uh, what, what you can get there already for six dollars. I'm gonna go ahead and put the links in the description of this video so you can go ahead and pick up your own copy of Dungeon Pages off of I think it's PMP Arcade, Arcade, and um, yeah. So again, definitely recommend this one. This is a pretty pretty good solo player game. Um, I again love solo games, and this is just another one that I would go ahead and tell you to give it at least a try. Play. Uh, so it's only six bucks and uh you know printer and uh paper and ink and then you can go ahead and pull dice out of one of the probably many board games that you have or at least i know one of the board games if you have sagrada you have dice to to use for this game or like you know board gamers or gamers in general might have dice rolling or around the area but um but yeah definitely recommend this one uh go check it out i'll also leave the bgg link so you can go ahead and learn more about it but yeah so I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all got something from this video. Again, I'm here to go ahead and show you guys games, tell you guys about games, and I hope it's always informative. So without further ado, I will talk to you guys next time. Have fun, play games, have a great day. Talk to you guys later. Doodles!